Well, here we go again. Um, I said in the first video about on the subject hum, uh, on being human that uh, <clears throat> if you learn to see the brain in the, as a complex organ that it is, it will change your view your, of what it means to be a human being. And that's, that's pretty vague, right? So really, in the videos I've made since then, um, I've been trying to give myself as an example of how having that point of view has changed who I am. Um, And last time, part three, <laughs> um, I was talking about how you can learn to see when your brain is making mistakes, when a thought arises that is based on a prior conception of reality. <laughs> the prior conception being that you have free will. And the newer conception, the more up-to-date conception, is you don't have free will. So when that thought pops up, it can become your brain's reaction just to, to dismiss it as that's wrong. I don't need to think about that. It's wrong. <laughs> I don't need to spend any time there. Um, but the one thing you have to keep in mind is the network whose activation comprises that idea that I am better than somebody else. That network hasn't been totally erased it's still there and every time I dismiss the thought it gets less likely to be activated you know its neurons are not getting stimulated very much so they either they find other things to do with their time um, which is really maybe what happens although they're, they're still capable of being activated and you never know what's, what thing in your environment or what convergence of thought will lead that network to arise again. But <laughs> hopefully you still have your, uh, your, the network that says that's, that's stupid <laughs> and, uh, and dismiss it again and it, it comes up less frequently. But uh, so that's a that's a fairly straightforward kind of change, you know. Some things don't make sense, and so you just stop doing. Why would you do something that didn't wouldn't make sense? So that's true with uh, things like feelings of superiority uh, or inferiority, or blaming people for having had the life you did. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh man, that was too bad what your uncle said to you on the 4th of July back in. <laughs> because that that thing that he said, or she, yeah, he said, um, became a part of your experience of the world. And it shaped your expectations, or as Lisa, Feldman Barrett would say it would affect your brain's predictions of fu your future behavior. That is an interesting concept to get your head around. Um, but another one that, another concept of hers that I think is kind of crucial to understanding things is that this idea of the body budget and she has this beautiful discussion of how the brain evolved to regulate the body. 
<laughs> and the, as the body got more complicated, the brain got more complicated. Well, it's if you if you get the gist get the gist of that story, you you can see how that sort of evolution could lead to language and behavior that we are doing today. So, she she paints a beautiful picture. Uh, you should definitely read it. Um, So, the easy things, <laughs> the easy things are seeing uh, those feelings I talked about, you know, superiority, inferiority, so forth. But the thing is, when the e when you deal after you deal with the easy things, when when those feelings, when those wrong feelings uh, stop coming up so often, then you start seeing more subtle indications that your brain is operating on a prior experience that no longer applies you know I'm, and, and that's not something that you consciously do it <laughs> i mean that's your brain's job is to say how has the situation changed how should that affect my prediction of future behavior given that the experience that I have that doesn't actually apply very well in this situation. So it's um, it's trying all the time to find a way for, for each of us to fit into the environment, social environment, it's just like that's, we're humans, right? Social animals. So, uh, getting us figuring out how we can fit smoothly into the social fabric, it eases the brain's regulatory <laughs> difficulties. You know, if you're in, in uh, a situation where everyone's in agreement and have a nice situation, everything's going well. Um, what then? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Lost that one. Um, so, but the idea is we're we're on the uh, the tricky stuff, and uh, and that's the no free will part, and Lisa. She can't go there, and, and I totally understand. It's hard <laughs> because when you realize that there's no free will, and you realize that your brain is just doing the best it can to keep you your <laughs> your body budget low. And that's all that's happening. That's all that's happening, and your feeling of your for the feeling that you have always had of being in control of your life is just wrong <laughs> along with those other things you know so uh, uh, another trickier one a, a one that's hard really hard for a lot of people uh, is uh, is pride it doesn't make any sense to be proud proud <laughs> of whatever it is you're 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 being proud of like um, you know so s suppose I was uh, proud of having blue eyes what did I have to do with it <laughs> it makes no sense you know I mean it's DNA what how should I, how why should I be proud of that right 
Well, everything I have ever done has been just as much a part of cause and effect playing themselves out as my eye color. So, <laughs> there's no more, it makes no more sense to, to be proud of anything that I have ever done than it does to make sense of my eye color. They're both just natural phenomena. That is what my life is, a natural phenomenon. And uh, <laughs> that feeling of being in, in control of it, it's, uh, it's so automatic. You know, I mean, if you've been doing it all your life, <laughs> if you've been having that feeling all your life, it's like, how do I, how do, that's wrong, you know, of course, I'm not in control. So how, but how do I see that differently? Well, we're all being made <laughs> by this biochemical machine in our head. That's, that's what's making all of us. Um, it's running on experience and uh, evolved capabilities, whatever they are. Um, and it's out of our hands. <laughs> you know, um, I was talking about how once you realize that there's no free will, you're not in charge or anything else, that certain things become obvious and that one is uh, uh, pride and uh, shame, blame, those, those things are just obvious. So, it's not like you are deciding not to have those thoughts anymore. You are not consciously deciding that those thoughts are not good anymore. That decision about those thoughts is being made by the interaction of networks in your brain. And along with that goes the feeling that you are doing something, <laughs> that you're changing your behavior. And um, you know, as shorthand, it's okay. I mean, <laughs> But you can't take it seriously, you know. Uh, if you pay attention to what goes on in your brain, you realize that you don't have any idea how it works. <laughs> I mean, you get a peek at how it works, but you don't get sick. Like, I make these pictures, you know? All these pictures behind me, right? And in the process of making them, I do it on a computer, right? There's 50 million decisions that have to be made. You know, where, where to put this slider or whatever, you know? They're just, and uh, I just keep moving all these adjustments around until it looks good to me. <laughs> but why does it look good to me? I don't know. It, it, it obviously doesn't look good to everyone. <laughs> or you'd have some of these on your wall too, right? But, um, but it looks good to me, you know? So it makes me happy. It's like, oh, isn't that neat? Um, but I don't know why. <laughs> I, 
I don't know why my brain decides to to move the lift lever one way or the other and decides, oh yeah, I like that. I don't know why it likes that. Oh, okay. It looks better. <laughs> that's how we that's how we ordinarily think about it, right? But the the more you realize that you're just along for the ride, the more interesting it becomes to see just how the fucking machine works. I mean, just to watch it do this shit and to note that I don't know how it works, but it's weird, isn't it? It works. <laughs> ah, so that is probably very unlike the way you have always looked at yourself. Most of us think, yeah, I decided to go to college, right? <laughs> I decided to take this job, right? I decided to decide. But we don't really know how the decision was made. You know, it all happens up here and it just it just comes out, you know? Yeah, buy that car. <laughs> so, you know, all our lives we've been going along thinking that we were doing stuff. And... One day you realize all that was wrong. <laughs> you had some interesting experiences along the way, but the idea that you were you were making those things happen, it's not not true. It didn't happen that way. Um, so that is, you know, I think. For me, it's radically different than the way I used to look at myself. And it was scary at first. You know, it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Where do I go from here? You know? <laughs> it was like total, total confusion. Uh, but for me, the way out of the, out of the confusion is what's the science, you know? What? <laughs> how does this thing work? You know, that'll uh, clarify. You know, well, how, why does it see reality the way it does? So you can't, you know, like I say, I don't know why it likes one picture more than the other, but you know that in principle, behind the scenes, it's my whole life experience that comes together to like this particular configuration of colors and the whole process just happened. <laughs> just fucking happened, you know? It's like, you know, the scientific view of the the origin of the universe and everything that happened since then is just, the Big Bang just happened. <laughs> So far, we're not sure why, but it happened, right? That's that's the way the whole thing looks, right? That's the way the whole thing comes up. And that's the way our lives are. We don't know why, but they just happen. They come out the way they do. And to me, it's a wonderful thing to see that process. I mean, I don't understand it. I don't, you know, it's, it's, uh, I mean, it, it's like you can't watch it work in real time. You know, <laughs> there's too many neurons firing up there. It's just, you know, no, no way. So you, you get this, like, Reader's Digest version <laughs> of what's going on. Um, but it's interesting. You know, uh, it's just amazing that it works. <laughs> yeah, it, and I, I have no doubt that it works. I mean, um, I'm sure. I'm, I think the science is good. But read Lisa's book. You know, maybe you'll be more impressed. Um, anyway, I think that's enough. So.
Enjoy your life as it is.